What's going on? We're going to talk about elliptic curve cryptography, explain how it works, how it encrypts the data, and how it's different from RSA, and then we will take a practical scenario from Hack the Box. The machine name is a Shrek. The machine name or the machine contains a live, uh, not live, contains a practical scenario of the encryption and decryption using the elliptic curve crypto. So I said, why would we go, why wouldn't we go first over the concepts behind this uh, algorithm, see how it works, what is a mathematical equation used to encrypt the data, um, how it's different from RSA, and what are the live examples or applications of this uh, algorithm. So first, elliptic curve crypto, the first thing we can say about it is it is a public private key so encryption. So basically it uses public and private key to encrypt the data. So if you don't know about public private key encryption, a practical example would be, say you have a sender here, okay? We have a sender. Okay, and we have a receiver. All right, now, say we have um, a message. All right, let's choose another color. Um, say this one. So the sender will send message to the receiver. Now say that the message is here. Okay, this is the data. Okay, now, the public private key works in a way that the sender will use the public key of the receiver. So here we have public key. Okay, now this is data, right? Or let's say it's plain text, plain text data. Now, the receiver, they have their own private key. So the sender, okay, will send, will encrypt the data with the public key, right? And send it over as an encrypted ciphertext. So here we have data, we can call it cipher text. Now, the receiver will use their private key. Let's make another color. Uh, whatever. So over here, private key to decrypt the message. So here we have the data in pre decrypted. I hope this is clear. Now, it's not perfect, I know, but this is what it means when we say public-private key. So the sender uses the public key of the receiver, all right, to encrypt the data. Now, once the receiver receives the data, which is in cipher, ciphertext, or whatever, uh, they will use their private key to decrypt it. So now, Typically, all of the uh, there are many algorithms that use the public-private key encryption. So, the first thing about elliptic curve crypto that it uses public-private key. Now, the next thing about it is where do we use the elliptic curve? Technically, we use it in web applications, web applications, online stores. and Bitcoin. So Bitcoin uses elliptic curve. Now, let's create a new one. So, so far we've seen what is elliptic curve, what is the encryption it uses, and where it is implemented. Now, what is the difference between elliptic curve and RSA? So here we're talking about elliptic, curve is RSA. 
So both, they use the public and private key, right? And they are both widely implemented, but why elliptic curve is better? What makes it different? So basically, let's take an example. Now a key of, let's say, um, 1,024 bit created with RSA. And let's take here a key of 160 bit key uh, created with the ECC, elliptic curve crypto. So technically, the 160-bit key created with elliptic curve equals in security to the 1024-bit created with RSA. So they are both uh, equally secure. But the takeaway here is, let's take our color here. Okay, the takeaway is that this 60, 160 bit key is faster than the 1024 bit. That's why elliptic curve is better than RSA. It takes less time to compute the key than the uh, the RSA one. Why? Because actually it is smaller. As you can see, 160 bit is a bit, it's notably smaller than 1024, which makes the encryption process way faster than RSA, which makes elliptic curve is way better for mobile, mobile applications. Now, let's talk about how elliptic curve calculates or performs a mathematical equation. So basically, the elliptic curve is full elliptic curve why? Because we have here a diagram. Say, I know it's not perfect, but okay. So, and let's draw a line here. So this is the curve we're talking about. So we have like this. Oh my God, so bad. Okay. So that's the curve of the elliptic curve the elliptic curve of the algorithm. Now, how it performed the mathematical uh, encryption or the what's the mathematical equation of this curve? So basically, any line, let's say a line from that goes this way. Oh, no. Let's take it back. So, line like that. Worse. <laughs> okay, let's take it this way. So, technically, it's not helping me. Okay, as you can see, this line intersects with the curve in two points, say point P, now we have here point Q. Now the equation is y equal plus a x plus b. So technically, any points that satisfies the equation and intersect with the curve are used for are used in the uh, encryption. So basically, we have another way or another uh, thing to mention is the trapdoor function. So also, we have trap or function. Now, what's trap or function? A trap or function is a function that uh, demonstrates a way of calculating stuff. I mean, uh, say for example, let's take an example of using trap or function. So, say we have cipher plain text here, plain text plus public key. Right. If we combine the public key with the plain text, we will have here ciphertext, right? 
Now the trap door in the elliptic curve is used such that if we take the ciphertext here, so if we take the ciphertext and the public key, this will not yield the plain text. That's the definition of trapdoor function, right? It's one-way computation, okay? So the, if you have the public key and the ciphertext, but you will not be able to obtain the plain text, you will need the private key, okay? That's the, the, the meaning of trapdoor function. So technically, that's the curve of the al uh, algorithm, and that's the equation and how it works. Now, basically now, let's jump to the machine and see the implementation. So, as you can see here, let me go up. So this is the end map scan of the machine. Uh, I'm not going to walk through the machine. There are, this is a retired machine. You can uh, access many walkthroughs on the internet. I'm just walking you through the concept uh, used in, before gaining the first foothold on the machine, which is the elliptic curve encryption. Now, as you see, the machine has 21 FTP, 22 for SSH, and 84 HTTP. So, basically, you will log in to the FTP server some way, okay? And you will find many files containing ciphertext, okay? Now, let me open... Um, so, here's sudo or cd, correct? Okay pseudo ciphers okay now the first cipher or the first first encoded string is this one which is clearly it is base 64 string right now we can also we can decode this easily but this, the next one that we have found is another base 64 string So you got two base 64 strings, okay? Now we can decode both. So let's take, take the first, take the, uh, the, the second one. Equal this 64-D. It doesn't work. Okay, so basically, as you can see, we got the ciphertext. Now, this is an elliptic curve ciphertext. This is an example of elliptic curve ciphertext. Now, we require to decrypt this. So, back to the explanation here. We will need, what you will need here is, let's go to the trapdoor function. We have the ciphertext, right? But we don't have the public key. We re we require to find the plain text. Okay, we only have the cipher text. So to find the plain text, we 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 require the private key, right? So let's see if the um, nano So remember that we have another uh, encoded string. Let's take this and decode it. Invalid. Yeah, actually, I shouldn't have put the double codes. So only this. Invalid inputs. Uh, 
Perfect. So you see here, Prince Charming, which is most likely the private key or the passphrase used to decrypt. So let's go back to the uh, whiteboard here. So right now, if you go back to the first board. So the concepts here are this. So we have the uh, data in cipher text. Now we have the private key. Now we will decrypt it easily. But how do we do that with the elliptic curve? There must be some way. So uh, let's go to, okay, so here. There's a model in Python, okay, used to encrypt and decrypt with the simple elliptic curve cryptography. Okay, it's compatible with Python and it's available in GitHub. We can use that to encrypt and decrypt. And the instructions are very clear. So we will import now the string, the same, much like the same way outlined here, and decrypt it. So let's jump back. Python 3. Okay. So first, let's import secure. Okay. Let's define a variable called cipher. The cipher is the ciphertext we have just found here after the decode of this page 64. So let's take it. Okay, next we have the, let's say private pass equal this. Now, we have the cipher text, now I have the passphrase, now we will decrypt it. Dot decrypt. The arguments are the cipher, which you have just defined, and the private pass. As you can see, the password for the SSH file is, and you have to SSH in as sec backslash n. So basically, you see we have successfully decrypted the elliptic curve cipher. Now, technically, we can also encrypt it back. So if we get back here, all you have to do is to just import secure. And you see here, secure the passphrase, swap the key, be my private key, and you'll be encrypting the passphrase again. So technically, that that's the demonstration of the elliptic curve cryptography. Um, you can also visit the page and see more information about the utility and how to use it for the, for the encryption and the decryption. By the way, you can use that for the files as well. So if you have a file to encrypt, okay, use the encrypt file, okay, and define the path to the file and then the path to the same file but with the encryption uh, extension. You have to define your passphrase and encrypt it. The same way, to decrypt the file, they will be uh, the same, but we will define first the pass to the encrypted file, pass to the decrypted file, which will be created for you, and the private key, which is a private key here. Okay, so that was about today. I hope you enjoyed that, and see you in the next video.